The following is an EHC Media Production. What is going on, wrestling fans? Moses Marquez here with what just happened, or what the fuck just happened, from WrestleMania 34. I'm sure we've all talked about it. I'm sure we've all been talking about it. It's been on our minds all day and all night. The show of shows went really bad, really fast at the end, at least in my opinion. And I want to go through the whole card very quickly, and I want to give you, I guess, my biggest what the fucks, if you will. And then, uh, just to plug right here, I'm going to be working on a full review of WrestleMania with a possible special guest. And I will keep it very secret, like Braun Strowman. And, you know, maybe I'll just go randomly kidnap some fucking kid off the street, and he'll do the show. Like, let's go, kid! Just down there, I'll do the rest! With the dark I think that kid's gonna have to relinquish his title because he's gonna be a school night. He's got school the next morning. He's got obligations, people, obligations. And because of that, he will no longer be one half of the tag team championship. Whatever. I don't know. I don't know what the hell's gonna happen. All I know is this is really stupid. And I'm not gonna start with that. So let's start with the beginning. Let's start with what did happen really quick. So let's go. Th- I wanna quickly go through the entire thing. We had two battle royals. And, uh, and a cruiserweight title match in the uh, in the pre-show. Now, now here's my thing. The um, the men's battle royal had no guys from NXT, had no random returns. It was a fucking geek battle royal. And um, Matt Hardy wins with the help of Bray Wyatt, which I guess they're a team now. My guess is oh, Jeff's not coming back. Or if he is, he'll be back hopefully tomorrow. But I don't know. We'll see what happens. But it was odd for me. Um, we had the Cruiserweight title match, which I thought was really good. I enjoyed it. It was, uh, that was a great match. Cedric Alexander, your new Cruiserweight champion. Uh, I'm, I like Mustafa Ali. I do. Um, his promos are awesome. He's great in the ring. I just felt like Cedric would be the better champion. I feel like Ali, would. it's going to be one of those like, holy crap, they actually gave it to him kind of moments. We all think, or I think a good portion of us think like he would be a better Cruiserweight champion, but I think Cedric was the better choice in that opinion. <clears throat> Sorry, in that, <clears throat> wow, with that decision. And then, of course, we had the 20 women uh, battle royal, the first ever women's battle royal, um, I guess on WrestleMania. Naomi won by eliminating Bailey because Bailey was standing there like a goof. I thought she won. I was like, holy crap, they're going to actually beat me. You know, they're going to make Bailey. I thought she, I was like, that's a total heel move right there. She turned heel. I was like, if she would have did that and won, it would have made sense. But then you're going to end up eliminating her. So it's like, she turned heel, but you're still fucked. Like, I don't know. I would have just given it the W. But I don't know. That's, I didn't get it. So Seth Rollins against The Miz against Finn Balor. For the Intercontinental Championship, I thought one of the better matches of the night. Um, I like Seth Rollins, uh, you know, going from burn it down to I guess cool it off, or something with his Sub Zero looking eyes and stuff. Like I don't know what the hell that was, but it was cool. I guess like I felt like the entrances weren't all that big of a deal this year. You know what I'm saying? Like I think last year with everybody was low key like a big deal, and the year before everybody was low key like a big deal, and like this year it felt like nobody was a big deal. You know what I'm saying? Like, The Miz came out, and he wore, like, the same shit. But it was, like, a different color. And then he told The Miz to to fuck off. Which was cool. That was alright. And then Finn Balor... <clears throat> and then we had Finn Balor come out, and... You know, apparently, you know, they're trying to jump, like, into the deep end with the, uh, with the LBGT or whatever. I don't know how to pronounce it, and I apologize for... And if I offend anybody with that. But I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. Um, I was really hoping to see the demon. I was really, really hoping to see the demon. Because I was like, boom, this is his moment. And he's going to win. I see title at Mania. And no, no demon. A g- pretty good match. Um, I kind of think the one on Raw was better. Their singles match, Seth and Finn. But I mean, this was a pretty good match. It was a pretty good match. So, <clears throat> then we have uh, Charlotte taking on Asuka um, for the uh, SmackDown Women's Championship in what I thought was probably the better of the women's matches. 
I really do because I th- I did like the Nia Nia Jax and uh, Alexa Bliss match, but I thought this was a pretty good match, like a pretty really like a really good match. Um, but I don't see the point of beating Oscar. Like they are legit pushing the crap out of Flair, and I get it. I get it. Ric Flair, I get it, and she's good. She's really good. I can't deny her that. I can't deny her that. But we all also can't deny the fact that that last name really does help a bit. Now, Asuka losing, I think... I think she should have went heel on her. Rather than somebody was ready for Asuka. No, you should have turned heel. Anyway. Fatal 4-Way, Jenna Mahal, Randy Orton, Bobby Roode, Rusev Day. The guy that I think should have won was Rusev... In a pretty good match, um, RKO's everywhere. Like it was back and forth. It wasn't like a great match, but it wasn't a bad match. You know what I mean? Um, I really do like the decision that Jinder won. I thought it would be better off if he was a U.S. champ before he was the WWE champ. But I guess it's vice versa now. And Rusev can win it in Saudi Arabia. You know what I mean? I don't know. But my whole bit is is like I thought this was the perfect moment for Jinder to win this thing. So, <clears throat> I like the move here, and I think, and it was it was really good. So, the probably, and I'm pr- and I feel bad for saying this. No, I don't actually. You know what? I'm very impressed by this. Kurt Angle, Ronda Rousey against Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. This I was very impressed by this match. I was very impressed, and I was watching with my girlfriend and a, and a couple of non fans, and they enjoyed it. They really thought that was like a really good match. Ronda Rousey put on a really good match. Granted, she was working with a 14-time champion and a you know somebody who's been around the business you know since she could you know walk. Actually, probably since before that, she was around the business from the womb. You know what I'm saying? So I thought this was a really good match. <clears throat> Ronda Rousey taps out Stephanie McMahon with her famous armbar. Immediately taps her out. I've never seen Stephanie tap so fast in her life. I would have started tapping before she wrenched back, but that's just me. It was probably one of the better matches of the night, in my opinion. And then another really good match was this triple threat tag team match, in my opinion, with the Bludgeon Brothers taking on the Usos and the New Day, and the Bludgeon Brothers holding their own, making you believe that they are a, a tag team that just goes in beats up everybody and walks out with the belts and that's exactly what this match was the Usos and the New Day fought and fought and fought but the Bludgeon Brothers were too much they killed everybody it was awesome I loved that match that was a great match and then in a segment that I hoped and prayed and thought maybe it was going to go a little different I think a lot of us really was hoping for The Undertaker to come out with the American Badass gimmick I was definitely one of them um, but unfortunately he came out as the dead man and that's perfectly okay with me. I'm just happy to see him come out. Um, but the segment, it started with, uh, John Cena, uh, he, he coming out to the ring, uh, earlier in that night, John Cena was, uh, told by one of these refs that, Hey, he's here. He's in the back. And so John Cena goes running up the ramp like some crazy freak. And it's like, Hey, that fan just hopped the rail. Why is nobody tackling him? Apparently it's because he's either it's either because he's huge or it's John Cena. I I'm I'm going with the first one. Anyway, so he comes out to the ring. He um you know is expecting to see the Undertaker. He's waiting. He's waiting. Nothing. All of a sudden he goes black. Or no, he gets about halfway up. No, he goes black. And here there down comes Elias. Elias plays his little get down, walking down the aisle, playing playing his fucking guitar, whatever. Hits the ring, gets a aid. That was great. Whatever. I was. I kept hearing that he was going to do a thing with the Rock. I'm really surprised that there was like like no legends other than the Hall of Fame class that came out and did anything. I'm really surprised. Like they normally have like a gimmick or two, or some or somebody comes out at least the Rock. For crying out loud, Stone Cold was on a random episode of Raw. Like you couldn't get him out here for Mania. Like I we didn't need it. I just felt like. Maybe like Elias and The Rock would have been huge. You would have got a gigantic pop for it. But that's just me. Anyway. So, Elias goes down. Uh, John Cena starts walking up the ramp like he's going, you know, 
like he's going to leave because, you know, everybody leaves by walking up the ramp. They don't tell you to walk. Hey, walk, you know, jump off the side right here like they've been telling everybody else. <laughs> and place goes black and all we hear is the famous gong. And I will speak for myself when I say this. It, I still get goosebumps. I shed a tear or two. I will be a man enough to admit it. Um, the Undertaker is what got me into professional wrestling. So every time I see him now knowing that he's, as far as we know, done. Every time I see him, it's like, it's that more impactful. He's, that's the point. You know what I mean? That, like, that's what they try to do with Brock Lesnar. But he doesn't have the aura or the essence of The Undertaker. Even though he's beating him, I don't give a shit. Anyway, in a pretty fucking good match, John Cena putting over Taker like he's fucking in the prime ski in a great match. Taker beats John Cena. I still love the point where John's going for the AA. Undertaker sits up. He gets so fucking scared. He falls to the floor. It still makes me laugh today. I'm going to make a gif of it, or somebody needs to, and it's the greatest thing ever. John sold beautifully for Taker. It was a great match. Speaking of another great match, Daniel Bryan, Shane McMahon taking on Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. If Kevin and Sami win, they are reinstated to SmackDown Live. But in this really good match, Kevin and Sami were smart to take out Daniel early on. It was well planned out, I thought. Like, they kept him out for a while. This was good. Like, see, this is the thing that makes it terrible. Because, like, I'm eventually going to start... It's going to start going downhill. Shortly, this was a good WrestleMania, and then it took a fucking nosedive. I will. It took a nosedive. Okay, so Daniel Bryan eventually, you know, comes back. He gets to shine on. He shows that he's, you know, very capable of, you know, still doing partially his style, and you know, and then at the same time, a safer style. We I noticed he was grabbing on the ropes more when he was doing his. Uh, kicks into the corners, he went for a baseball slide rather than a tope. I like it. Like it's it's this is good. I hope I hope he gets some more matches. Um Daniel and Shane win. Uh I wanted they made uh I want to say it was Sami Zayn tap out in the uh in in the yes lock. So another good match and that was a great match too. Uh, but another also in my opinion a pretty good match was Nia Jackson and Alyssa Bliss. Uh Nia took out Mickey James early goes in, it goes back and forth. You think Alexa might pull it off, but then, like, Nia shuts her down, shows her that she's a monster, and it was a good match. Nia Jax, your new Raw Women's Champion. And then we have a match that, unfortunately, I will say that it is... I'm disappointed in saying this, but it was under my expectation. I felt like this match could have delivered a little bit more, but at the same time, this isn't New Japan. Okay? We have to understand... That this is Vince we're talking about here. This is the WWE. We can't get what we want. But it did have the swerve of the night, in my opinion. And I love it. So let's get quickly into it. AJ Styles beats Shinsuke Nakamura. But at the end, you think they're going to go for the fist bump or the hug or the something. And Shinsuke ends up presenting the title to to AJ like, dude, you beat me, Can, like you totally deserve this. You're way better than me, man. Here you go. This is you, bro. And AJ grabs it and whammo, shot to the balls. AJ goes down. Shinsuke just starts beating on him, kicking on him, stomping on his head. Just that McNasty heel. I love it. Great match. And now we took a fucking nosedive into what the fuck was this? First off, Sheamus and Cesaro come out in like a Mardi Gras thing, which was cool. Like, you know, it's themed, whatever. I just didn't see the point of it. Uh, they're supposed to be heels, and they're out here having a good time. What the fuck? Anyway, um, does that. They end up playing the music anyway. And then it's Braun Strowman comes out. You expect, like,. I'm expecting, like, Rey Mysterio, or at the least, like, Big Show. Something, you know what I mean? That's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting, like, Big Show, and it will, will just be disappointed, but it'll be a decent match, and then, oh, these two are going to be tag champs for a little bit. No. Oh, hey, it's Rey Mysterio. Oh, they're going to fucking lose because, you know, Rey Mysterio is not going to be here long term or whatever. But the scenarios were there. 
You know what I mean? You could have brought somebody up. What if it was fucking Lars Sullivan? You know what I mean? Like, you could have done that. And just have him, you know, lose. Or win. And then bring Lars Sullivan up. I would be okay with that, too. But the, the fact of the matter is, is he then picks a fucking random kid out of the room, out of the uh, fucking crowd. And apparently this kid is the fucking son of a referee. Who ref that goddamn match? So, what the fuck was the point of this? Like, I'm cracking the joke that this kid's gonna really wish the title because, you know, it's a school night and all this shit, but, like, what was the point of this? I was so baffled, like, okay, like, great, Braun Strowman's tag champion. Who's his partner? Because it's not gonna be this goddamn kid. And why was it a kid? You wasted a huge pop return for fucking nothing. For, like, it, the, the crowd was baffled. They didn't know what the fuck to do. I didn't get this. And then another thing I don't get was this fucking main event, okay? I, this is where the what the fuck just happened comes into full effect. It makes this entire pay-per-view take a fucking nosedive, and it's terrible, okay? Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, in a match we all expected Roman to go over in, okay? We finally thought we're going to be done with this part-time championship, you know what I mean? Ro uh, Brock's gonna go to the UFC good for him what the fuck ever you know what I mean let Roman carry the fucking title we don't like it but who fucking cares he'll be on Raw every week I apologize for the profanity but this is what this is what upset me my girlfriend not a cat she's slowly becoming a casual watcher she's asking all the right questions she even looked at me she said that what the fuck was the point of that it, thank you thank that's she proves my point and I'm sure we all thought the same what was the point of this what was the point of this? A year-long build-up for him to lose. Granted, six F5s. I counted six. If I'm wrong, please correct me, but I counted six F5s. Busted him wide open, or at least I think it was a blade job and a horrible one at that because the kid wouldn't stop fucking bleeding. So maybe it was Brock. But here's my bit. What the fuck was the point of this? Brock should have easily... I mean, it should have it should have been hand and foot. Does that make sense? Probably only not. But here's my... Like, I don't see the point. Why put Roman through all that if he's just going to lose? What was the point of this year-long build-up if he's just going to lose in the end? We could have had a match with Finn fucking Balor against this. And if he would have lost, it would have made sense, but nobody would have liked it, but it would have made more sense. You built this guy up as the only guy that's going to be able to beat him, and he gets beat. Now what? We're going to deal with him as champion for a little bit? One of the guys, I want to say Robert Davis, had said, you know, he's close to breaking CM Punk's record. Is that the point of this? Did he re-sign just to break CM Punk's record? And if that's the case, when is he going to lose it? SummerSlam? We have to wait till the summer for him to lose this thing and go away? He's not doing anybody any favors. I'm not a fan of him. This main event was pointless. You should have put this on and ended with fucking Nakamura and, and, uh, and fucking AJ. At least that would have had a better swerve at the end rather than whatever the fuck this was, okay? This is what the fuck just happened. Tell me what you guys think. Leave me comments below. I'm hoping this thing gets posted early so you can get it in the morning. Sorry for the no music and all that stuff. I just felt like I had to get it out. Um, have a great day at work, guys. Thanks for listening to me. I'll catch you around the bend, boys and girls. Catch you later.